The coronavirus has forced millions of people into quarantine and self-isolation. That means millions of people are working from home, some for the first time. We take a look at how people cope with working from home, and we ask an expert how the crisis might change how we work for good. I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Thank you for joining us. People all over the world are working from home. That includes many of my colleagues here at DW. Our reporter Kio Dura sent us a report from her apartment in Berlin where she set up her temporary office and she has some tips on how to make it work. Nah. Whoever can should be doing home office right now. Here are five tips on how to actually work from home. Even if no one sees you today, take a shower, put some actual clothes on. All of this tells your brain that it's time to work. This may sound super obvious, but I haven't gotten my Microsoft Teams to work the entire day. Learn from my mistakes. Make sure everything works before you have to stay at home. I know, it's super tempting, but set up a separate, clean, quiet workspace away from distractions. I know, it's easy for me to say because I don't have kids. My only distraction is my favorite TV series and the fridge and the laundry and the dishes and the books. You get my point. Yes, that means you might have to look presentable, but talking face to face is the best way to feel less alone. And happy hour can be virtual too. <laughs> Sleep while you'd usually be commuting. Cook yourself a yummy lunch. Finally blast out your favorite music while working. This whole situation is tough, but those of us who are actually privileged enough to still earn money and do so from the safety of our homes, we should make the most out of it. Let's speak now to Norbert Gronau. He's a researcher from the University of Potsdam studying how people work from home. Norbert, thank you for joining us. First of all, what do you think of those tips? You know, don't work from bed, uh, stay in touch on video conference. Do you have anything to add there? Yeah, this is not only an advantage, but it might also be a quite uh, huge disadvantage because all travel times uh, are now gone and uh, immediately be replaced by another video conference, another telephone conference, and another call. So the work density is, that uh, I um, find, found out, is much higher than in typical office work, where you have to walk from one meeting room to another, or where, where you can walk to the cafeteria, or have a break at the co water cooler or the coffee machine. That's all no longer possible. All right, You're so responsible yeah. for yourself. You might have more time uh, clocked in, you're saying. I mean, looking at the fact that millions of people are now in their home offices, essentially, uh, what have you found? I mean, how does this change the way we work? Are we more productive? Are we less productive at home? Well, in, in uh, some cases, it depends. In some cases, we are more productive because now we can exactly see what the other colleague is talking about because we have the PowerPoint slides crystal clear or the keynotes uh, crystal clear on the screen and not eight meters away in a darkened room. Um, that's an advantage. But on the other hand, uh, what we are focusing on in our research is that creative and knowledge intensive processes in, in businesses, they need um, the nearness of other people. They can't work in the same manner online and uh, in digital meeting rooms, and therefore we are missing something. So we, we to, to, the, today we had with my researchers uh, a virtual 
uh, lunch break where everybody sat in front of his camera and ate something and uh, drank something, but that's not the same. You, you cannot achieve a knowledge transfer between uh, video screens. You need the nearness of persons and right. uh, in some of right. The knowledge intensive processes, we have 75% of knowledge transfer by socialization, by personal meeting between persons. And Norbert, you know, when all of this is over, how do you think this will fundamentally change the way that we work? Will more people uh, stay with working from home permanently? I don't think so. I, I think um, uh, some tasks can can be done uh, remotely and some other tasks will need the personal um, meeting and it will be resumed in full uh, when we are able to travel again. I think that uh, won't change a lot. All right, Norbert. Only for administrative us. purposes. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Norbert Grenau from the University of Potsdam, thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. And we will be following this story closely at DW. Our social media editors will be reporting weekly. And we want to know how you are coping with working from home. We're all so new to this crazy, mind-boggling situation. This virus is not influenza. We are in uncharted territory. Our life as we know it is changing dramatically. But we're all in this together. In this new series, we want to find out how to handle our new lives in times of the corona pandemic, thankfully with the help of leading experts. It seems like it's been a very popular study. How do we stay mentally and physically healthy? How do we handle our family and our partners without driving each other completely insane? First up, how to deal with cabin fever. How are you dealing with being cooped up? Let me know, leave a comment, and I'd love to profit from your experiences for our upcoming episode. Well, we asked you to send us some of your questions on the COVID-19 pandemic, and many of you did get in touch. Our science correspondent, Derek Williams, has some answers. Take a look. Where did SARS-CoV-2 come from? To the best of our knowledge, the first cases of COVID-19 appeared in the Chinese city of Wuhan back in December of 2019. They were closely associated with a wildlife market there. Now, coronaviruses can jump from animals to humans, and we think that that's what happened here. The SARS virus did the same back in 2002 and 2003. It was traced back to bats via civets sold in wildlife markets. We don't yet know what animals might have acted as intermediaries here but we have seen very similar coronaviruses in bats, and we think that they're the ultimate reservoir in the wild. How does it spread? COVID-19 is a pretty infectious respiratory disease that's spread by droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose of someone when they cough or sneeze. That's why it's important to stay at least a meter away and preferably farther from anyone who's coughing or sneezing. Uh, it doesn't stay airborne for very long, we don't think, but it can remain infectious after landing on surfaces, which is why you also need to pay attention to how often you wash your hands and you should try not to touch your face as much as possible. How do I know if I'm infected? The only way to know for sure if you have COVID-19 is to take a test because many of the symptoms are similar to those people experience when they have other respiratory ailments like the flu. In COVID-19, the primary symptoms that people have reported are fever, dry cough, and fatigue. And then to a lesser extent, things like aches, congestion, a sore throat, or diarrhea. Um, some people who catch the disease don't have any symptoms at all. They're asymptomatic. Around four in five people who get it will recover from the disease without any special treatment or having to go to the hospital. What can I do if I'm infected? 
Because this virus is a novel one in humans, no one has any immunity the first time they catch it. Even if someone doesn't show any symptoms, they still grow infected and can infect others. We don't yet have any specific vaccines to prevent COVID-19, and we don't have any medications to treat it. So at this point, if you are infected, there's no way to interrupt the course of the disease. The best thing to do if you're infected is to talk with your local medical authorities and, and follow their advice. If you aren't in a high risk group for the disease, the chances are very good you'll return to full health within a couple of weeks. If I've had it once, can I catch it again in the future? Because this is a new virus, we still don't know much about how the immune system will react to subsequent infections with COVID-19. Um, doctors assume that catching it will give you some kind of immunity, but a big question is exactly how long that immunity will last. Our immunity levels to related coronaviruses, like some that cause common colds, are not permanent, and we don't really know why. The question of immunity is a question that really only time will answer. A news team at the Austrian public broadcaster ORF will go into voluntary isolation to pre prevent any of them from becoming infected. Now, they'll be isolated on site in Vienna. They've all tested negative for the virus and no one will be allowed in. The door will be guarded and food will be delivered. These 180 employees will guarantee that news services continue to run uninterrupted. ORF is not the only Austrian company to seal off key teams of staff. Last week, around 50 healthy employees from the main energy company were isolated within certain power stations to make sure that the electricity supply would not be affected. Thank you for joining our COVID-19 special here on DW. As always, you can get the latest on our website, dw.com. For all of us here in Berlin, thank you for watching.